Jazzy on the beat. Ho. Come on. Okay. I don't have any bars for this episode. You better figure it out for okay. that beat drop. This is going to be the second consecutive episode that I've freestyled, and I don't know how the fans will feel about it. Here we go. Uh, kick it like one, two. You already know what I'm going to do. I'm about to kick it like Kung Fu. You know what dope going to do. About to kick it with CT. Hey. About to know they're going to believe me. About to know they can't see me. Going to see it like a genie. Got to kick it like a Latin. You know the game I'm tagging. I'm in the game like Double Dragon. Mm. You know the money I'm having. You know the game I'm spazzing. You know I am a baller. And on this episode, we gonna have a Kiara. In the, build, in the building. She's that was here. good. She's, she's here. Come Y'all on, see. man. I knew you wouldn't let us down. I mean, you know, my baby's here. You, you know? It? Yeah, understand that? That was, that was dope. Up, man. Hey, man, how are you? Man. man. If I was half as good as you, I'd be... What, what's the thing you always say? If I was half as good as you, I'd be... <laughs> you gonna steal my <laughs> st- On you. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when I tried to take your wildest LP? <laughs> we had real <laughs> That's to let you know I was a pain. <laughs> let me tell y'all the story. <laughs> CT had a slogan for years. He, like whenever oh. anybody would say something, he'd be like, boy, you wild, wild as hell. hell. That was his thing. Yeah. And so something that happened and we weren't talking for a while. I think it was like I think it was a sketch or something something that happened it was to like the point. like 2011. Yes, and we just weren't talking and I came <laughs> I came up with a production company called Wild as Hell TV. Wild as Hell Productions. I was blown away, bro. I Yo. remember because I went to Tangerine and I went to go see a magic show <laughs> in Santa Monica. And we were there and I was like, oh, no boy posted a sketch. Let me see. And it said, you Wild as Hell Productions. And I was like... <laughs> I was like, let me call. And for those of y'all who don't know, Doughboy is always on that BS. <laughs> he know he on that BS, but he don't pick up the phone. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I love to talk. You Doughboy? Because I love, love to talk. talk. What up? He just did something. I'm like, let me call him. Because I don't want to text. Let me call him. No pickup. I called again. He picked up like I was the problem. Hey, what's up, man? I was like, Doughboy. What's up, man? <laughs> Do you need something, man? What you need? <laughs> Bro. I, here's my, the, uh, Patty my Crocker. favorite my favorite stealing memory of yours. Mm-hmm. Is this more than one. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm a thief. Yo, you are. <laughs> you favorite are stealing story? An intellectual thief. I'm going to tell you what happened. I will try to pitch your idea back to you. <laughs> <laughs> so no boy we in, the, we in the apartment this is circa 11 <laughs> we, we apartment. and I said something like hey man we should do such and such and he was like that's peace that's peace, <laughs> <laughs> and, that's peace. <laughs> and I sat with it for a second I was like Hey, what did you say? <laughs> he was like, no, I'm saying that's, that's, that's peace. And I was like, no, boy. <laughs> Where did you hear that? Where did you hear that, bro? <laughs> you said it's for years. Because <laughs> you had just got back from sack. And Yo. I'm like, no, boy is a sponge, bro. He's like a baby. Like, he will pick up something and just run with it. And I was like, who did you hear that from, bro? And he was like... I went to a poetry show. <laughs> the best up part was I tried to roll the ball out in the park and just see if you was going to say it. Yeah, Bro. man, that's peace. <laughs> what you think about that one? Is that, is that a good one? Said, man, where did you? And we went back and forth uh, for like eight to ten minutes. Oh, boy. Yeah, man. You can't be this funny, yeah, bro. Man. <laughs> what I give you, though, is I give you your credit. You will buckle, which oh. I respect. A lot of people won't buckle. Oh, yeah, I'll give like, it up. <laughs> no, it was this white dude. What was, uh, so I was in the movies, right? Mm-hmm. I went to Detroit to see my family before Christmas. Mm-hmm. And um, we're in a movie seeing um, uh, the Thanksgiving movie that we, just came out. The one that you're supposed to see with me. You went to go see that with some other people. You've you been, you been playing around. No, 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 no. So we, <laughs> <laughs> so we see the movie. There was this uh. white dude, this old white man. I saw him and he was talking through the whole movie, right? A couple of times I yelled out, hey, shut the fuck You know, like I hit him. <laughs> I hit him with it. And then uh, his lady was with him. She was like, shh. And he was just saying things like, oh, well, here, I see what's going to happen now. Like he was doing that. But End of the movie. I'm with my family. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't want to be that guy. End of the movie comes. Credits come up. He gets up. I'm like, oh, you ain't going to stay till the lights come on because you know. We on your ass. We on you. <laughs> so I get up with him and I go and I say, bro, you going to talk through the whole movie? That's my line. I be using that. 
I'll just say it out loud, out loud, like a rhetorical. Like, you just gonna talk through the whole thing? And he was like, What are you talking about? I wasn't talking. I said, Dude, I watched you. <laughs> I was talking. <laughs> I watched you talk and I followed you so I can talk to you now. And he was like, No, you're thinking of somebody else, bro. I don't I wasn't talking. I was more offended he called me bro. <laughs> Bro, because he's in his late seventies, right, right, right. And I'm bro. like, what do you know about bro? You yeah. know what I mean? But anyway, but yeah. no, any time like you gotta watch. Like if you're a white guy, and you call me bro. It's gotta be a certain way you bro me. Don't yeah. just be picking how you gonna bro Don't me. Don't pick it. Bro me the right way, or we bro might have way. a situation. It might, yeah. it might, it might go there. But I respect the fact that you will buckle because that dude did not buckle. Like oh, he yeah. maintained his lie. Till the end, bro. Can't stand a guy like that. Man, you know you're caught. Just give up the ghost. No accountability. You know, people respect more if you just be like, ah. Yeah, <laughs> because here's what I thought, bro. Here's what I learned. Nobody's going to whoop you like when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. So if you just admit that you're wrong, people will have an easier time dealing with that. I found that to be false sometimes, though, because I've really? told the truth sometimes and stuck up my ass. Before. Are you serious? I'm glad you told. Now get your ass in there. You better get this ass. You talking about as a kid? Yeah, as a kid. No, no, yeah. I'm saying. Oh, like as an adult. As an adult, oh, nobody's okay, yeah, gonna yeah, pull yeah. a belt out and whoop you. Right, right, right. No, yeah. yeah. I, but no, I would just remember as a kid uh, thinking that I would tell the truth and mm -mm. kind of skirt the uh, discipline. Mm -mm. Like, I'm glad you told the truth. Now you're about to get what you deserve. Bro, here's the honest <laughs> part. If I could be honest, I, looking back on it, I appreciate the whoopings more than. The conversations, because my mom, oh my mom. I think we all did. We just wanted yelled. to go. Did you like? Were you an outside kid? Like, did you go out and play oh, outside? Of course. So that was always my thing. Hurry yeah. up and whoop me so I can get on. Just whoop me with my life. I Fun. didn't want to hear the arguing. Like she would just be yelling, and you just be like, "Mama, no, no, no!" But you don't. You can't say it. Yeah, my dad would be a talker. Like he would like talk. Like you know, what I'm saying like just sit here and just give you the conversation. I'd be like, "Nigga." He <laughs> get to, back to my friends. Back to Fun my. fact, though, that's where a lot of my creativity came from because I would get in trouble mm -hmm. as a kid and I would have to stay in my room mm -hmm. because they realized that I was just trying to be going back outside. Mm -hmm. So my dad was like, no, nah, you staying in your room, but I'll let you go to the uh, to the library. You can get as many books as you want. Okay. I felt like a baby convict. Yeah. But like I was like a huge Judy Bloom fan. Like, you okay. know what I'm saying? Like never knew this. Did you you won't you don't rock with Judy Bloom? I still don't know who Judy Bloom is. You don't know who As she... you're telling me about this. You don't you never read the book Super Fudge? Tales of a fourth grade nothing? Did Judy Bloom write those? Yes. So if I just said I don't know who Judy Bloom is <laughs> they can try to drop her best How stuff. You... <laughs> Double like, it down. like that was going to drum up a memory. Right. Oh, wait. Tell us about she fourth grade. <laughs> I had no idea. Yo, it's a conclusion. You don't know who Judy Bloom is? Really? Y'all never heard? Y'all never heard? Oh, here's the funny thing. I keep forgetting that's his nickname. So when you say conclusion, I thought you were about to make another point. I'm thinking you were talking to the people. So they could be like, all right, conclusion. They were like, I know Judy Bloom, but you were talking to actual conclusion. Actual per person behind the camera's name, conclusion. But nah, man. So I that's really how like a lot of my creativity mm. kind of was birthed because I was stuck in my room reading books. Well, mine was just television, man. I'm actually in the middle of an audio book right now by Kenan Thompson. Mm -hmm. uh, Kenan uh, Thompson from Good Burger. All that Good Burger, gotcha. SNL. He's mm -hmm. amazing. And he's somebody that I grew up looking up to and loving. So mm -hmm. this is the first audio book I've ever bought. Really? Yeah. I've had to purchase several audio books because my, up, I don't know if I said this on the last podcast, my upfront reading yeah. is going through the window. It's what trash. do you mean by your upfront reading? Like I can see you right now. I can see. I can see that that says Zoom. Like I can see stuff that's far away from me. Mm -hmm. But when it's something like I gotta read, oh, got I can't it. see. Like I'm, and it's starting to be scary. What is it? Far sighted when you can't see far. It's the, it's the inverse of whatever it is. So if it's near, then that makes me far sighted. If okay. it's because it's near me, then it's far sighted. Meaning you can't see what's near you. Yes. Okay. Cool. I got you. It so sucks because you need it, glasses. No, I do. I, and I could, so my mom was telling me to just get some readers because everybody in my family has glasses. Mm -hmm. um, so and you thought it was going to skip you. I thought it was. I mean, That's you crazy. know what I mean? I thought, you know, I've been able to skip a couple things. Like, you know, Pop's hairline is the woo. Like, <laughs> like I got lucky. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's the woo. <laughs> you know, I love you, Pop's. <laughs> but, it's the woo. <laughs> but I've been able to, you know, skip a couple things. But, you know, like, and the crazy thing, so she told me I needed some readers, like the ones that you can get, like, at the store. Yeah. So I got some, and I like was looking. I was because we was I was with Kiara, and um, I was looking at the ingredients on toothpaste. Mm -hmm. And without glasses, I couldn't even see. It was just so blurry. And then when I put on these one point fives, mm -hmm. which is I guess the the number of prescription, then I it looked super big. I was oh, okay. like, damn. So what you gonna do? 
I think the smart thing for me to do is to actually go to an optometrist and let them check my eyes instead of me just trying to self-diagnose. Yeah. Get some readers. Like, I mean, I'm going off with my mama, but mama saying, but here's the funny thing, man. You you said last episode that you on Ozempic, and you said that's a 150 or 250 a shot. Dose 50. So it's 250 a shot, Mm -hmm. and I got an update on that too. Is only fifty dollars. So you go spend something. I got summer goals, nigga. (laughs) But I'm about to get off of Ozempic. Okay. In two weeks. What's the two week significance? Because I'm just like it'll be the top of the year, whatever, whatever. But I heard about some more side effects. Oh, let's hear some. So I heard that it can have um, adverse effect on your kidney function. Definitely. Um, so yeah, that was the main one that I was uh, hearing about. And once you get some kidney dysfunction, then you got some serious problems. Mm-hmm. And plus, I just look at it like this. Today, I just weighed in. I weighed in at 305. Okay. So I'm officially Mr. down. Mr. Miami. Yeah. I'm officially down 50 pounds from when I started on Ozempic. So I'm just like, you know what I mean? Congrats. Let me just have used this. As like a kickstart yeah. to my weight loss. I wasn't going to stay on it forever. I didn't want to become dependent yeah. on it. So I'm just like, I'll take it to the end of the year. Then I'm off. And then I'll, you know, just keep doing these behaviors and these activities. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That I've So I know you go. guys are watching. You're wondering. Um, he just said the end of the year. And by the time you're saying this, it's January already. Oh, yeah, yeah. I There's a reason for that, ladies and gentlemen. Because one, we wanted to start the new year. Hold on. Year. What's that sound? It's a motorcycle. Oh, okay. Uh, one, we want to start the new year off with a bang. Two, mm-hmm. we want to have some episodes in the can. So it's like maybe we have a week where we're like, hey, I'm in Moscow. Yeah, yeah, you know that what I'm saying? <laughs> you just kicking it. You drop an episode. So uh, you can catch all of these episodes on patreon.com slash Dope early. And you can catch these on the YouTube page. Doughboy is going to be cutting these clips up. I'm staying on your ass about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, y'all can see him everywhere. And by, by Doughboy, he means conclusion. And by Doughboy, <laughs> he means Yo, conclusion. Yo, I wanted to tell you this too, and I'm just going to say me. it to you live in front of the people just because, you know Let's what I'm saying, it. you can't hit me. You know what I'm saying? So oh, I'll just say it in front of That's crazy. That's <laughs> crazy. So listen, I know you be busy, and you're yeah. a busy man, and that's cool, man. I get mm-hmm. that. I want, I work better and tranquil vibe kind of environment so i want when we start shooting this uh-huh. if we if 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 we gonna be shooting for an hour mm-hmm. come with like an hour and a half just so we can just chill you, wait you Make, said if we're gonna be shooting this for an hour come what for like an hour and a half just so like because like every like i know it's only the second time but as mm-hmm. soon as you get it you'll be like hey man we're starting the next five minutes i'll just be like yeah, man, get up in the minute. put the weed we gotta go we gotta go and i'm mm-hmm. just more of a Hey, so what are we going to be talking about this episode? Okay, cool, cool, cool. You feeling good? You want to grab some food? Straight? Like, just so it's just more of a... <sighs> I like I? that. Absolutely. Okay, cool. First of all, thank you for sharing that with me. Uh, <laughs> I will rebut that by saying, last episode, we had some technical difficulties for a while. And about I was, about, I was about 45 minutes. 45 yeah. minutes. I was yeah. on a time crunch. Yeah. I stayed longer. You did. Right? So this particular episode, I came with two hours to spare. I was like, yo, you know what? I got two hours to spare. However, mm-hmm. I will say this. And this is something I'm very staunch on. Staunch? Okay, I the big word. I don't like bullshitting before I record. I would gotcha. rather we record and then after. after. Because we were going to go. I was going to take Kiara to this uh, to this restaurant up the street, this panini and pizza spot. Mm. Great paninis. Even yeah. better pizza. Listen, um, after this, I got. Uh, I don't record again until... Three. See, I would love that. And just, just just to sit down and, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's what I you know, want you to know? say. Because I just kind of, I like flowing. I hear that. And you deserve sweat. that. But mm-hmm. let me hit you with this. Hit me with So, picture, and mind you, this is this is your studio. Well, you know, yeah. this is some places you own. Yeah, I'm well, honored to be able studio to be recording 26. here. Uh, to have gotten a meet conclusion mm-hmm. and uh, YDB. Mm-hmm. However, just from my, just if I could give you this. Whenever I walk in anywhere, this is not just here. When mm-hmm. I walk in. And I see brothers smoking weed mm. and kicking it. I'm like, oh, this doesn't seem like we about to start. See, and that's the thing. So, so let us let me let me give you a, a kind of a backdrop to that. Give it to me. Shout out to Conclusion. Shout out to YDB. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> these are two of the guys that Very you know. What I'm dope saying, dudes. yeah. And you would, they almost they're like one of those people that damn near work harder when they smoke. Like you that's know, so so it's not necessarily like a. They're going to smoke and they be like, oh, like, but I hear what you're I saying. That, yeah. But like, you know, they'll, you know what I'm saying, cats will hit the weed and they'll be like, all right, let's get these cameras set up less, you know what I'm saying? So I, and you'll see like, you know what I'm saying, as you're around more, like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's just like, that's just kind of part of the environment. So it's not like niggas trying to smoke and then just sit down and eat munchies and 
<clears throat> go on, on deep dives on YouTube. Like, nah, people gonna... at home, I'll tell you right now, <clears throat> conclusion, extremely, extremely professional and dope. I like his speed and his work ethic. I'm going to give you that. <clears throat> YDB, the same way. <clears throat> However, I will say this about you. I was operating off old Doughboy. Oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Old Doughboy oh, would yeah. get to my house and we recording these episodes 20 minutes before we record. And he'd be like, all right, you ready to go? And I'm like, hey, you don't, you don't want to just talk about the game? And he's right. like, yeah, let's go. So I'm like, oh, okay. When I'm coming into the studio, I'm expecting that Doughboy not kicking it. I got hey, man, you. how was your day? It's like, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. why are these cameras and we're And we're just getting back to it. Like, this yeah. is only episode this two, episode man. Two? And I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Or 43, technically. 43. Yeah. Man, we getting it, man. I'm excited, man. What I want to talk to you about on this episode, um, yep. do you have any? And I, I, I know that, um, I, I know that you know we go into different years and we we kind of have different plans. But is there anything big that you're going into 2024 that you want to kind of conquer? Yes, I want to conquer. I want to be. Uh, I want to be on Netflix a lot more. Okay. I want to be on Netflix a lot more, whether that be the uh, the TV show Family Time that I did eight seasons on. Hopefully, they reach a deal and somehow throw it on Netflix mm -hmm. and or I start doing a lot of stand-up comedy on Netflix. Um, that's something that I'm very interested in because I need more marquee credits. Okay. I need the credits that are going to catapult me into another stratosphere as far as um, visiting different cities and ticket sales go. Okay. Right. The Internet is great. It's very fun. I'm my own boss. But sometimes you want the power of the machine behind you. So that. So it's the almost, you know, to piggyback up what you're saying, it's almost like the the same. If I was to draw a parallel of a rapper being independent versus signing to a major, you're ready to, to get on Atlantic, so to speak. Yeah, I want to be I get almost the machine behind be, you. Uh, the the end result you want to be Jay Z or Rockefeller, where okay. it's like you're the guy and this is your company. But for a, uh, a purpose right now, I would love to be Usher on Arista Records. Mm, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Where it's like he's got all his talent, he's got the hits, and they're pushing him. Right. And you talk about Usher around Confession Time when they Woo! put the put the woo wop behind him. Woo! Let me tell right. you something, man. <laughs> that album, Usher Raymond. Yeah. Is the King, yeah, of R and B. I know y'all gonna say R Kelly. I know it, right? And here's the thing. And TP two dot. That's the thing that just throws me about the whole R Kelly thing because I'm always conflicted about. Do you, can you still support a guy? But mm -hmm. TP two dot com. Jeez, it's one of your favorites. Yeah, man. <laughs> just even just when the, just when it would first come on, I'd just be like, man, that was just one of those albums that just. But you know, I say that to say, would you say that Confessions is maybe? One of the greatest, if not the greatest, R&B albums? One of, yes. Here's the thing. That, <laughs> I'm, we're not going to talk about this brother's legal situation. Yeah, yeah, but I will say, R. Kelly's career of musical hits has been so good that even women be like, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I know what he did, but I mean, you know. I'm just saying. It's some songs, and I'm like, hey, I have no dog in this race. I'm just going to say you like what you like. But our, but Jay-Z, I'm a Jay-Z, Usher, man. Right. Usher has proven how great he is with this residency, with the Super Bowl coming up, with his constant evolution of music and his talent and his I feel voice. like we haven't gotten the Usher album in so long, though. Do you feel like he suffers from... Almost the Eddie Murphy syndrome. And what I mean is mm -hmm. raw and delirious at the bar so high. Like he's almost just like, Nick, what? Dr. Dre with after he dropped the chronic in Chronic 2001. It's just like, is it the bar was set so high that, that, that artistically that they just feel like I can't beat that? I think with Usher, a lot of his songs weren't written by him. Mm, they weren't his experiences. Yeah, right. but here's the thing. He's such a talent. He can make anything dope. Mm. But I think once artists realized the power in writing your own songs, they start mm -hmm. going into the, all right, well, I'm going to write it, and I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. And that takes time for you to really get good at, for you to make a hit mm -hmm. on your own. But with Usher... He's such a moment in time for us. Like a lot of us have grown up with him. He was the first album I ever uh, had. So yeah. that's something where with Usher, uh, he just needs, mm, everybody needs a hit, but Usher is 
Can when I, you have iconic albums, you always compare new music to their old albums. When, when was his last album? Like, when was the last time? He has an he, album coming out soon, by the way. Does he? He's working on something? Yeah, it's coming out very soon. If it's not out already. I, I would I would feel some certain type of way if it was already out. Because I'm like, damn, I ain't even heard. Not that. You got to think of how music he is, bro. Like, you've heard a lot of songs that he's dropped, but you might not have been like, oh, I didn't know this was going to be part of an album. I thought it was loose songs. Because a lot of artists release loose songs. Beyonce is one of the few artists that, bam, here's the album, and now here's all the videos for the album, and everybody's pushing it's just like a songs. whole rollout. Yeah, 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 a lot of artists don't really do the rollout anymore. You know, f- randomly, I, and I'm just now thinking about this, only just because we're talking about it, Yeah, I can't remember, and you tell me mm-hmm. if you remember in conclusion, if you got one, I can't remember the last R&B song that I really connected with. And mm-hmm. what I mean is, like, you remember sometimes certain R&B songs can make you cry? Like, uh, if you heard yeah, them, be like, yeah. like, I feel what this person is saying. What's like, a song that makes you cry? R&B. Randomly, yeah. I Miss You, I, Aaron Hall. Ooh, interesting. Uh, I used to cry. I used to, like, even remember the video was super sad? Like, I don't, but I, I don't take that experience away from you. Right. The song that makes me cry to this day is Mama by Boys to Men. Mama and yeah. uh, the Kanye song, uh, I Love You Mama, which is on the graduation album. Yeah, Kanye would give you a moment to almost make you just forgive everything. <laughs> I cried that song, yeah. so I'll give you the year, bro. I'm in, I'm in LA, mm. it's Christmas time 2007. And I knew that I was going to go back home for Christmas. Mm. And I was just, I had a lull in a moment where I was just like, man, I miss my mom. I played that song. And I might be, I think it's on, home, it's either it's graduation home. or. Uh, it's on graduate. It's on graduation, right? Graduation or late registration. I can't yeah, remember yeah. which album. But I remember that song. And when I played it, I cried so tough because I love my mom so much. And I missed her so much man. that uh, I said, I'm not going to listen to this song anymore. And mm-hmm. I have not listened to that song in full and what, 15, 16 You still years? haven't listened to that no, song? No, it makes me cry every time. Really? And I just saw my mom. <laughs> just saw my mom. <laughs> no, man, because people don't really make songs like that that connect. Right. Like, anymore. Like, I can't remember. The, like, I used to, like, really mess with R&B songs, like, for mm-hmm. real. Um, mm-hmm. I can't think of an R&B song that, like, you know, makes me feel like that. I Never Dreamed You Leave in Summer makes me cry. Wow. Stevie Wonder. Okay. Okay. Oh, that makes me cry. Uh, what's another song? I think those are the only two that make me cry. Overjoyed by Stevie Wonder makes me cry. Stevie would pull it out of my face. Stevie is that guy. Yeah. Can I tell you a story? Uh, come on. All right. So, it's your podcast, baby. I mean, you know. <laughs> um, so my uncle, this is this is going to sound sad, but just hear mm-hmm. me out. Gotcha. So my uncle JR, uh, let's back up. My dad mm-hmm. died in 2017. Love my dad. Rest in peace. He was uh, very sick. And when he died, you know, black people get your affairs in order in the soul to speak. You got to be able to leave mm-hmm. your, your kid something. And I'm not talking about something monetary, but my dad always had this ring that I wanted. Like, I I wanted to, I wanted that to be my wedding ring. Oh, wow. I, I want that ring. And he's like, oh, man, you know, uh, you know, my yeah. wife ain't going to let you do that. Right. And I love my stepmother. Uh-huh. But I was like, yeah, I get it. And after he died, like, all the jewelry was gone because, you know, you got to make stuff happen around that time. Mm-hmm. And, um, so I was like, damn, but I got my father. My father had given me a watch when I was like a teenager mm-hmm. that I had never worn. So I went and got that watch fixed a couple of uh, weeks ago and start just wearing it, right? Mm-hmm. And my little sister gave me a pair of my dad's glasses that were just like mm-hmm. readers, like okay. you just said. Right. And I got my prescription in them, and I just have those glasses. So I got that, that, and of course, of course, my part of the urn. Mm-hmm. Um, but my Uncle JR, which is his brother, died last year. And Rest in peace, Sam. Yeah, man. Um, and my uncle Jr. His name's George Moody, hmm. and Junior because my granddaddy was senior. So uh, my uncle Jr. passed, and I, I was very hurt because my uncle Jr. was responsible for teaching me the value of money. He was always treat. He treated me like I was his son. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And we were very close, and I love him. And uh, I was glad I got to say goodbye to him. I was there for his birthday before he passed, a month before. Got it. And then I went home this past weekend. And my aunt Clarinell was like, uh, I got something for you. And I was like, oh, what's up? And she was like, you know, your your grandfather had this chain that he gave George. I always call him JR because uh, he's junior, right. but they, everybody else called him George. <laughs> right. So uh, that he gave George. And I was like, yeah. 
And she was like, well, you're the last moody man left, and I want you to have this chain. Wow. And is that, that the is chain you're chain. wearing? Got my wow. grandfather, my uncle JR. So it's like, to have a piece of your familial history feels so good, man. That's so dope, man. Because, like, I don't, bro, like, that's such a dope thing to even have because like I don't really have that on either side mm. of you know what I'm saying of my family like you know what I'm saying like you know shout out to my pops me and my pops is cool we talking yeah. again and all that but you know what I'm saying my my biological grandfather mm. never had a relationship with mm. him in my life he was you know just wasn't in my life and he's passed away mm. I don't really have a relationship with anybody on that side of family yeah. and then with my mom's biological uh, father Never had a relationship with mm. him, like you know what I'm saying, and you know, so the fact that you got and like I don't have any physical things to like have, so that's like super. It's, it's dope. crazy. Wear that with pride, man. I do, man. My grandfather was so dope, very cool dude. Uh, these are my fathers, like this is my father's brother, my father's dad. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have these things like from my mom's parents, but she does, which is great. Mm. Like I didn't, I had my grandma until I was like five, but I didn't have my grandfather. He died the year that I was born. Mm -hmm. But I would say to you. While you're talking to your dad every day, just be like, hey, man, give me that watch over here. Right, <laughs> you know right, right. Just give me something, right? <laughs> some, give me that. <laughs> I want that. And with your mom, you'd be right. like, yo, like it's something that your mom would have done when you were a kid. Like my mother, uh, she has like this, these different pieces of jewelry or things that I know my sister and I would want. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like just to be like, oh, that's my mama. I'm obviously going to have the urn. The why, why obviously oh because me my, i'm her favorite job and also <laughs> does she admit this <laughs> yes and my sister knows it but my sister is the far better sibling uh like she's the far better child than i am gotcha but um yeah there's stuff that i would want as far as but um yeah man even with you with your daughter like find out what she likes of yours you know what i'm saying and just be like yo i'll make sure that you have this or here Take this now. They're important things, like you know what I'm saying, just to definitely have. And yeah, just you know, just to actually, you know, actual tr actually transition yep. into that. So we have a special guest today that we're gonna be a uh, friend of the show. Friend of the show, friend of the podcast. And it's somebody that you actually know yep. pretty pretty well, more you know, more than most people. Um, it's my daughter, my baby girl, Kiara yeah. Janae. And uh, before we even bring her in, because we're going to, you know, have her, you know, come sit in the middle of us. Uh -huh. But before we even have her, uh, have her uh, come in here and talk to us, talk to me about your just, <clears throat> your vantage point of Kiara. Because you've known Kiara at this point now since she was four, four yeah. five yeah. years old. So like, what has been your experience like, you know, even back when she was living with me, back when she mm -hmm. was in kindergarten, like, you know, just seeing her grow you know, into this, you know, grown woman that she is now. What's been your uh, your your vantage point of Kiara? My vantage point is she's an extremely intelligent girl. Like, she was a very extreme, extremely intelligent little girl. Mm. And I knew that once I realized that she knew what she was doing with, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Oh, the way she would manipulate you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember her, I remember a specific circumstance where I was like, oh, she's smart, right? So, Doughboy is is a very pushover parent, right? Like, he loves this little girl. Like, most fathers, when they got a little girl, the girl has them wrapped around her finger. So, Doughboy would say something to Kiara, and Kiara, oh, she's she was such a baby. <laughs> she would uh she'd be like, okay, but but can we do this? And you would always buckle, right? And I would see this for like a couple of months on end. And then one day she just caught me when I wasn't in the best of moods. And you said you were like, now go upstairs. And then she was like, but I don't want to. And I was like, hey, hey. He said, get upstairs. Said, I remember that. Yo, and when, and when I said it to her, the she look had this on look her in her face. eyes. Like she was like, oh, you mother. Oh, okay. And you I was ruined, like. You ruined it a good thing. That's when I knew. That's when I knew she knew what she was doing. And that I was a direct threat to that. And I was like, oh, she's smart. She was only four years old. Yeah. And the fact that you hadn't seen it, yeah. I was like, oh, she's got it. <laughs> so that but yeah. like seeing her become a young woman to see her just grow because you know as an adult when you meet kids you're mm -hmm. already who you are yeah right they are you know going to continue to sprout up mm -hmm. and she's 
it's like I still see the same little girl, but you realize she's not a little girl anymore. She's growing up, man. And um, I'm, you know, this is let you guys know, you know what I'm saying? I rock with y'all, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't just be letting anybody have conversations with my baby. I be keeping her on the down low. But with no further to do, we're going to take a quick intermission and then y'all going to meet my baby. Here's Kiara the funny tonight. thing. When you say intermission, it makes it seem as though it's going to be a minute for them. Like for them, it's going to be like a, a flip and she's going to be here. True. Well, just know that that's what we do in the world of Hollywood and production. It's really going to be like five to seven minutes, and then she'll be sitting here. And then no, I'm talking about for the look, ladies and gentlemen, watch this. And we are back. And I thought the clap was going to be the. I know we supposed to get back into it and like say three, two, one, and just then... like that. So I'm... count three, two, one, three, two, one. And here we are. So, with no further to do, we have the beautiful, amazing, the multi-talented, my baby girl, Kiara Janet. Say what up to the people. Say what up. Hello, everybody. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. Feeling well rested. Mm -hmm. So, tell us a little bit about what's... Okay, so you're now uh, a freshman... At Howard University. All black yes. school. All black mm -hmm. school. Number How does it... one HBCU. Hey, she already one of them. You hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Number one. <laughs> so tell us, how do you how do you like it? Like how's the how's the experience? I love it. My first semester has been good so far. Um, I had to adjust to, you know, going from the west coast to the east coast. Mm -hmm. That was a little difficult. The weather is very different mm -hmm. out there. Ugh, it's really, really cold because you know out here it doesn't get lower than fifty. So mm. being out there, it's like twenty degrees. I'm like, hello, mm -hmm. like what's going on? I wasn't ready for that, but honestly, that's the only bad part I say about it because I really like the school. Like I've had a lot of fun meeting new friends, and I've had a lot of fun, you know, getting used to having that college class. Like because it's very different than high school. Mm. Like I get to choose my schedule. I don't have to wake up at eight o'clock every single morning and hear your mouth. <laughs> <It's amazing. The laughs> Don't just throw that out there. <laughs> the shots. Yeah, it's been pretty good. I love it. Okay. What does it feel like being on your own now? Mm. Like when I went to college, I was very, I was still in the city and I wasn't far from home. I was at like an extension campus. So like oh. you being on your own, you're yeah. independent now. What is that like for you? Um, I'd say it's pretty fun. It took some getting used to, you know, like the first week I was pretty sad that I wasn't mm. with my parents. But at the same time, I adapt to new places very easily. You mm. know, I've been moving around quite a bit my whole life. Mm. Ms. Anthony noticed. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, it wasn't really that hard for me. And I feel like I could do it again. I could, you know, venture out into new areas in the world because, you know, it's just fun traveling and being you know, far away from home, but at the same time, you know, flight's nothing. So. I love that. Before Tell you say this, though, boy, uh, just uh, while well, I'm telling you now, when you go to the parties, don't ever leave your drink unguarded. Don't never let nobody hand you uh, an open drink, mm -hmm. right? Unless you don't watch them pour it and all of that. Uh, if you leave it, leave it. Get you a new one. Uh -huh. uh, also, be very careful of second locations, right? Mm. Like if a guy's like, hey, what I up? I just said, look, go ahead, finish If a saying. guy's like, hey, what up? Hey, we should go to such and such. And you're nah. like, no, nah, I think I'm cool here. Or you know what? I would love to go to such and such. Let me get two of the home girls, maybe yeah. one of the gay homies as well. <laughs> and we can all go. Yeah, if my girls ain't there, I ain't going. Yeah. I always gotta come with a friend. I like that. Mm -hmm. No, I was just I was just telling her something like that, you know, because she had gone, you know, she was out with friends, you know what I'm saying, the other day. And then when she was out, you know what I'm saying, she was out at another place mm -hmm. after that that we hadn't discussed. And I was yeah. like, Kiara, I need you listen. And plus, you know, she was like, Well, I know I'm like, I don't it don't matter if you know yeah. certain people. I don't know who they, and you know, it, you know, just part of me, just because I'm just an overprotective dad. I yeah, just be yeah. like, but at the same time, like he said, like though, just go to the places that you know to go to, like you know what I'm and saying. And you in college, I'm gonna give you this a lot. My mother told me so much of this stuff when I was younger. Uh, when you get in cars with people, I know it's gonna sound wild, and these people be your friends, but you don't know what's in people's cars. Mm -hmm. So like, ask people, hey, yo, do you have any? drugs or you got like a gun in your car mm -hmm. and a lot of times these are your friends they're gonna be honest with you they're like yeah i got something on me you'd be like all right cool now that i know you can make your own decision yeah, from that point getting this young uber yeah <laughs> yo she mm -hmm. kiara had said something wild today oh yeah on the way in here okay. and i just want to run this past you to Let's see hear it, man. if you agree with her ridiculous statement oh my gosh so we were walking in here you know it's yeah. it was it was starting to rain outside yeah 
And she was like, yeah. so as we were walking up, she was like, oh, it's finna start raining. I can smell it. Yeah. I didn't say Hold that. On. I said I could smell the rain when it started raining. Do you feel like you can smell rain? Let me tell you something. I've been smelling rain since I was oh. 10. Exactly. <laughs> Conclusion. You smell Do rain? you feel like you can smell rain? I got a broken nose. I can't smell it. <laughs> That's honest. <laughs> That's honest. You would have had one if you would have disagreed with me. I'm like, <laughs> 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 Nigga, you can't, uh, you can't smell rain. You yes, can't. You can. Can. It no. has a smell to it. That's do. No. No, that's rain. Th- that's all the dirt and, and, and stuff that comes up off of the ground no. when it rains. It's not actually rain. Do you know what clouds are, though, boy? <laughs> yes, I know what clouds okay. are. <laughs> so if you know what clouds are, you understand that clouds are water. And clouds... Whoa, whoa, whoa. clouds are water? Yes. yes. Clouds. Don't act like you just knew clouds were water. <laughs> Yo, you knew clouds yeah, was water? Yeah, Why do you lash water. out when you don't know information? <laughs> <laughs> As if you just knew what clouds were composed of. Cumulus. Conclusion. <laughs> yeah, man. Wait, clouds are water? Yeah. No, no, no. All bullshit aside. Clouds are water. Clouds yeah. are water. So when water, when that cloud dissipates, a lot of times cloud dissipates before rain comes. So you are literally smelling rain. Exactly. So when I'm looking at the cloud in the sky, that's water? Yes. Evaporated yeah. water. Yeah. I just don't know how it can be true. It doesn't look like water. I've seen water before. It doesn't look like that. Have you seen air? You believe in it, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, y'all really are y'all messing with me right now? No, it's clouds the truth. or water. Yes. How do you not know this? What is the Sacramento school system? How did you know system? that? Who taught you this? The schools in Detroit. What do you Detroit. think it is when you can see your own breath? Like when it's extra, extra cold and you can just breathe and your breath comes out. You now that it. makes sense to me. So why doesn't a cloud make sense <laughs> to you? The, the sheer mathematics it just doesn't seem like it alright man well, we can't spend too much time on that anyway cause you missing a whole chunk of school Bro, I, 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 I genuinely didn't know okay but back to the uh, HBCU so yeah. you're going to college HU. what's your what's your favorite part about it because as I am excited that you are there and you're doing the, and doing your thing it's costing a pretty penny yeah. it's costing mm-hmm. a pretty penny that, that, so what part, part do you like my favorite part about it is probably just getting to know people through my classes mm. and networking and stuff like that because I feel like that's very important you know getting to college because now that I'm at HBCU you know, I have to find out ways to make myself noticeable mm. because, you know, they say at a PWI, you have to work harder because you're black. Mm-hmm. But at a HBCU, you also have to work harder because you're black. Mm. Everyone, everyone is black. Like, right. they're no different. So you just have to find out a way to, you know, make yourself important. And I've been having fun doing that in my classes, you know, joining m- multiple clubs and just finding out, you know, who I want to be for the next four years and after that, too. You going to pledge? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. y'all can't know which one yet because you know you saying you got to keep it a secret. But I do plan on. So do you have to be in a certain grade to pledge? Like, do you have you can't do it Um, as a freshman? No, I think it's not possible to do it as a freshman because you know they usually scout you know in the beginning of Mm. the school year. So like during the fall, they'll scout. Like you have to go to multiple events and make yourself known. But then after that, they don't really do like the you know picking until spring. So okay. mm-hmm. and then the probate is probably going to be sometime next year. So mm-hmm. I mean, I can start getting into it. Maybe I'll be chosen, you know, soon. But so when you, you get won't chosen, know like next they year. almost recruit you, like almost like a gang. I don't want to say like a gang. That's a negative connotation. Mm-hmm. But they can can come and like recruit you and just see like what you're doing on the campus. Be like, hey, yeah. we want you to be down with what we're doing. Mm-hmm. But then and then I you won't you won't that. have to like audition. Um, no, I don't think so. I think it just depends on you know the community work that I do because that's also mm. something that they look for. Mm. You know, in sororities, like what do you do outside of school? You know, you can get straight A's, but like, how are you helping your community? Mm. So, I mean, I guess I just have to really dive into multiple things to get noticed. That's what I was talking about. I tell you this as well. I don't know why I'm like advice train. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No pictures with your face. Anyway. I just want to tell no you that. No pictures with my face. No pictures with your face. What kind of pictures? Like at parties? Yeah, all of that. Mm. Yeah, no, no pictures, pictures no with your case, face. I see. There you go. Just be careful. So, Kiara, so we was talking about, you know, you know, some plans for the new year. I didn't even say my plans for the new year. I'll say them in a second. What are your plans for 2024? Like, do like you have new any? year's resolution. Yeah, do you have any? It oh. doesn't necessarily have to be a resolution, but do you have any plans going into the new year of what you want to mm-hmm. do? Any goals you want to accomplish? Yeah, so I want to start my YouTube channel. Mm. Let's officially start my YouTube channel next year. I want to, like, 
be able to lock into it, find out how to put it into my schedule of doing schoolwork, but then also making content. Mm. And then I also, um, what else? I want to have a different mindset academically going in because I feel like, you know, during the first semester, I thought it was going to be completely different. Like I thought, you know, oh, this is college. Like I got to change everything. To be completely honest, I didn't have to change anything. Mm, like, really? Yeah. Talk to me about this. I didn't really have to change anything. Like, I feel like I went into it with some of the old habits that I had in high school. Mm. So I think I just want to, you know, get into that college mindset, whatever that is. But, yeah, I just want to change it. Was it harder than than high school work? Cause you, it wasn't. You, you weren't really taking a ton of honor classes, were you? No. And it wasn't that hard. I took honors classes in high school, but I'm not really, I'm not in an honors program mm. in college, so... Mm. I mean, it's just, so, it's kind of the same. So it wasn't a ton harder of uh, of what you were doing? No, and I took college classes in high school. So I already had like a mindset, like what it's going to be like. But it was just really easy. And plus, I didn't have to wake up extra early every single day like to go to class. So, I mean, I think just moving forward, I'd want to, you know, get a different oh, mindset about college. Here you go. Yo, get you a trade. <laughs> that you don't have to like go to school for something you could pick up to where you can make money while you're in your dorm. Like for me in LA, when I got out here, it was cutting hair and I mm. learned as I cut people's hair. Oh, so you yeah. can start doing lineups. Mm-hmm. You can start learning how to braid girls yeah. because you know, that college life, you need that bread. Especially at an HBCU because yep. my fellow classmates, they be getting a lot of money just doing people's hair. And I'm thinking like when I first got out here, I thought, oh, like, you know, it's going to be cool. I'm with a whole bunch of black girls. Like, you know, the hair is going to be cheap. No, nah. like, no, it's not nah. cheap at all. Imagine if you undercut them. Oh, oh she doing it for 200. I do it for 75. Can I, can, I, can I tell the story of what happened with the with the hair? Oh, God. OK. okay. But hold on, let me say something about that first, <laughs> yeah. because actually some girl was like the hairstyle that I have right now. She did mm-hmm. for 70 dollars. And usually, come on, seventy dollars. Usually, it's two hundred dollars just yeah. for some soft locks. But this girl that I found in the dorm, she had a poster up and it said, "Oh, seventy dollars locks." And I was like, "Uh, I don't know about that." Like, I thought I was gonna get scammed because you know sometimes things just be too good to be true. Of course. But she was actually just, <laughs> not she in college. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seventy. You got the seventy on it. <laughs> okay, I need. You that. got that hot seventy. You so tell it. them what happened when you tried to get your hair done. Oh God. And 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 she went on the gram <sighs> looking for somebody to do her hair. Let's let's so, what happened. I went on Instagram to find someone to do my hair after my birthday because, you know, I spent some money. So I was like, I need something for the love. Mm-hmm. So then I get to this one girl's Instagram account and she's doing the style that I want for uh, $160. Okay. So I was like, oh, okay, like that's cool. Actually, no, it was like 180 but it was cheaper than what everyone else was charging. Yeah. So I was like, oh, like that's cool. You know, I'm going to make an appointment. So then I text her on her number because she had her number in her profile. I text the number. I said, oh, hi, like, are you available to do this? She said, yeah, I'm available at 3.30, 5.30, and 7.30 hmm. on a certain day that I wanted. It was a Friday that I wanted to get my hair done. Mm-hmm. So then I said, oh, okay, like, I'll get my hair done. And keep in mind, this is the time, like, around homecoming. Mm-hmm. Like, around, like, you When know, you need your hair done. When I need my hair done. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I decided to, um, you know, get my hair done with her. She said, 100% deposit is due. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me this. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> don't even make, that's an oxymoron, okay, 100% deposit. It didn't deposit. make sense, but you know, me being in a new area, I'm like, okay, like, maybe not everything's going to make sense for me because, you know, I'm from a different place Damn and they man. don't do this. So I'm like, oh, maybe they do this out here, like, you know, maybe it's legit, like, hopefully. <laughs> and she had 4,000 followers on the gram. So I'm like, okay, like, if it was a, if it was a scammer account, she would have zero followers. So... <laughs> That's what I was. This is the logic she had. I'm listening. <laughs> but now that I think about it, people can buy followers. So like, you know, I was keep going. Like that. Keep going. Yeah. So I paid her the hundred percent deposit, mm. <laughs> and then this was two days before my appointment. So then after I paid, I said, "Oh, could I have your address? So I don't know where I'm going. Like, where mm. do you live?" And then she said, "Oh, like out of safety, I only send the address the day before." I said, but I just paid you mm-hmm. money. Like, yeah. Safety, nothing. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> like, I already paid you my money. You can send me your address. So then I'm like, whatever. I let it go. My mom told me not to do this, too. She said, uh, this don't sound right. And I'm like, no, girl. Like, it's okay. Like, my friends followed her. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, yeah, I have friends that go to her. They didn't go to her. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the next day comes around. She sends the address. So I'm like, okay. So then I Uber to the address in the morning. And then I'm texting her. I'm like, oh, hey, like, I'm here. Where are you at? She said, okay, I'm coming down right now. I said, okay. So then I call her. I'm walking around. I'm like, I don't even know where I am because, you know, I'm not from here. So I'm just walking around. I'm like, okay, like, where's she at? 
I call her a whole bunch of times. She just doesn't answer. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, like maybe I don't have any Wi-Fi. Let me go into this place that I thought she lived at. <laughs> I go into this apartment complex, and then I'm calling her. I realize that I'm blocked. <laughs> and then there's a service guy down there that you know like runs the hotel. So then he said, oh, like, what are you here for? I said, oh, I'm here to get my hair done. He was like, you're having a hair appointment here? I was like, yeah. And then he was like, oh, okay. So then I go to her Instagram, right? I comment. I said, oh, hi, I'm Kiara. We have an appointment today. She blocks me on Instagram, too. Ooh, <laughs> cold, yeah. cold blood. She blocked me on Instagram. So then in that moment, I was sitting on that couch, and I realized that I just got scammed. So then I just started crying. I didn't care. Damn. Usually, I'm not the type to cry around people, but I just didn't care. Like, I was like, dang, like, I lost my money. It was, it was a lot of money. And the bank didn't even give it back. So. No, no. Yeah, I just Because what she did, let me tell you the other thing that she did that was genius. You paid the money two days before the appointment. Mm-hmm. The day of the appointment, 48 hours had already passed. Mm-hmm. You can't report that as a, something as your oh, bank because she wow. waited enough time. Mm. Dang. She thought about this. She's a scammer. Got yeah. her. But see that, but see the bigger thing that I was concerned about, I mean, because we could eat the money, like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like yeah. whatever with the money, but I had, you know, I had to even like let Kiara know, like, you gotta be careful when you're doing these things. You don't know who you're talking to right. on the other line. You don't know what, you know what I'm saying? So it was definitely a lesson mm-hmm. learned. But you know what I'm saying? And I'm other good. girls there, they got scammed too. Cause I seen it on Snapchat like two weeks, two weeks later. I'm like, dang, y'all couldn't have posted she was a scammer before. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> but no, nah, so you know Damn. what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm glad that, you know, she's been able to find like a community yeah. of people, you know what I'm saying, at the school, getting their hair and stuff done. And yeah, I think that, you know, what CT is saying is definitely valuable too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Finding a trade, like, you know what I'm saying? Find your trade. If I were you, I would go to the girl who did my hair for $70 and be like, yo, teach me how to do three styles. Mm. Look at the styles that girls are wearing. Girls wear braids. Girls wear your hair like this. What do you say? Soft locks? Mm-hmm. Do soft locks, braids, and do... um. Find out how to do like a, uh, just like a third style. Have her teach you those. She does her thing there. You mm-hmm. do your thing over here. And what would be dope is if you offer to go to the people, right? Mm-hmm. Only do women. Don't do guys. Yeah. But like if you go and you're like, yo, I'll charge you uh, $70 to do your hair, but you got to give me $30 and I'll come to you. Now you're getting 100 Oh yeah. yeah. And yes. you might be able to click up with her too to where if you know around like times like homecoming and things if she starts to get booked up too much, yep. you can kind of take the surplus and be like, "Oh, I'll, you know, get oh, some yeah, people for you." Too. You'll get some of her people mm-hmm. and you'll give her some of the bread for giving you some of her people. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah, uh, yeah. I thought about that. I thought about either doing hair or doing nails cuz I like to paint my own nails, but I don't yeah. know how to do it like professionally, but that's something that I can just learn. And then also there's this girl that she does crochet hats. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like the style right now, like just having like crochet, like either shirts or like skirts. So I kind of want to learn how to do that. And I could easily search it up on YouTube how to crochet. Come on yeah. now, make that and money. I, and I think too, I'm a, and you know, I was really going to, you know, have a, take an active step in helping her get her, uh, her YouTube and stuff, you know, up and running. Because I really feel like if you go into 2024 and you make that proclamation, like, hey, I'm going to get good at YouTube. You know, your dad knows a thing or two about these <laughs> digital streets. You understand that? Uh-huh. And um, I think that kid low key, because you know what I'm saying? Like, we're kind of getting to the point now where we're like, do we want her to get a part time job or, you know, whatever? So I'm, I think that you getting into YouTube, I think you have the perfect personality for it. And I feel like that'd be a perfect. Yeah. Uh, you Use your saying, phone. Don't mm-hmm. spend a lot of money on stuff. Get you right. a little 20 or $30 light from Amazon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tripod. Set it up. Set your phone up on the little phone tripod. Mm-hmm. And if I were you, I would just start doing vlogs like mm-hmm. my life as a freshman. And then you start mm-hmm. doing week to week episodes of you telling how you do it. Then next mm-hmm. next year, sophomore. And then you done pick your major. I've chose this major. Now, four years from now, everybody gets to see your journey. Oh, Tell yeah, a story like be... you just told about the girl scamming you. Hey, y'all, watch <laughs> out for, uh, what's her name? Get, watch out for Natasha Johnson <laughs> or something. And yeah. just bam. Because I've always wanted to do YouTube. I just felt like I needed to have a good idea of what content I want to create. Mm-hmm. Just so I can like keep the audience engaged. Jump cuts. Do short videos with mm-hmm. jump cuts. It keeps people attention. I do videos where I'll have like a, it's like a green screen background. Mm-hmm. I'll put the image here. I'll be here for a second. Then I'm here. Then I'm there. Then I'm here. <laughs> but I'm saying different things and it keeps people engaged. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's that giving you some true. good game right now. You should definitely, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, take a, take a look mm-hmm. at I'm his. I'm going to text you after this, too. Take a look at I his I need page. all the advice. CT, I wanted you to help. <laughs> I need all I, the I advice. Wanted, I wanted you to help with this because, you know, we were having a, a, a deep conversation, me, her, and her mom. And um, mm. I want you to. Uh, <laughs> you need some water? No, I'm good. Okay. I want you to uh, maybe give her some insight on this because I think you'll be a perfect person to say this. 
to her. Um, and I value your opinion on what you would say to my child. So, you know, we're talking about, you know what I'm saying, her uh, her major, you know what I'm saying, whatever, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. what she wants to do in life. So she's like, Dad, you know, this is my major now. You know, this is my minor. She has a minor in, uh, you know, in a... Uh, um, theater, whatever, uh -huh. and you know, and her major. I don't. You, you don't care if it's a secret, right? I can say what it is, right? Yeah. Okay. So her major is psychology, um, and so you know, we were just talking. You know, what I'm saying, kind of going back and forth, and you know, what I'm saying, I'm just like, you know, I'm trying to let her know, like, well, you know, what is it about psychology that makes you want to do this? She's like, well, you know, I, you know, definitely want to help people. You know, mental health, different things. Um, you know, plus it's a you know comfortable profession, like you know, so I can make some you know decent living. You know, and then plus with theater, you know, X Y Z. What I'm trying to give her the knowledge of, I'm like, how you want to go into this and into life and into how you want to do things is you don't necessarily want to go into things with thinking about how much money you'll make or whatever. You kind of want to find things that make you happy and then find a way for those things to pay you. So when somebody's looking to figure out what they want to do with their life, what kind of advice would you give a person in when in trying to make that decision? And somebody, you know, as impressionable as a college student, like, you know what I mean? Like, what kind of, you know, words of wisdom would you give her on what she would maybe want to pursue in life? Well, first, you got to think about your hobbies. Everything that you do for fun now, it's like, for me, doing comedy, I was always funny. I always made my friends and family laugh. And I was like, oh. This is all right. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then it was like, all right, let me try and pursue this. Uh, and then as the world has evolved over the past like 15, 20 years, you could play video games, which I always love doing. You can podcast, which is having a conversation with your friends. And then other people agree with some of the things you guys talk about mm -hmm. or can relate to. And then, bam, you got that. And then you have the aspect of all right, I like doing comedy, but I don't want to be for hire. I want to do my own shows. And then you make the money that way. So it's like everything that you have fun doing, you can mm -hmm. make a career out of. Like, um, what do you like to do? I like making people laugh as well. When you said that, I kind of resonated with that because I like making my friends laugh and the feeling of making people, you know, giggle and <laughs> be joyous. I like that. But then that also ties into the mental health giggle. thing. Cause like, you know, I like, you know, making people feel happy, yeah. you know? Right. So then I also like doing cheer. I'm gonna try for the cheer team in April, but that's something else I could make content out of, you mm -hmm. know, on YouTube. But I think I do just like, you know, being seen. So doing content, I feel like that'll be a really, really good hobby for me. And hopefully, you know. Let me give you this on a mental health thing. Uh -huh. Man, what if you, you know, sent out um, fillers or DMs to people or put up a post? You get you, a, you got an iPhone, right? Uh -huh. Get you a Google number to where people don't just have your main number but they can have the Google number and text you from there for what I'm about to say. So you want to get into the psychology space. What if you start sending fillers out there to be like, hey, I'm a shoulder. Come talk to me once or twice or three times a week. I'll charge you $50. I'll listen to all your problems for an hour. Right. You're actually getting prepared to do psychology or what if that might lead to a behavioral therapist or a therapist or a psychologist. Uh, and then you'd be like, yo, I listen to your problems for an hour. Next thing you know, everybody come to you with their problems. You can give them some advice or you could just listen, mm -hmm. sit back, make your bread. Oh. That requires you to do nothing but sit and listen. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Too. I like that. Quick and easy money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even dropped about four or five gems mm -hmm. on you. I hope you're yeah. picking them up. Yeah, I'm picking up everything in here. All right, so we don't want to keep you too long, Kiara. But what are um, what are some 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 parting words that you would have with the uh, with the audience, man? Like, tell them what you wanted to. It's a you know a bunch of people gonna be seeing you. So, what do you want to okay. tell the people before you get out of here? Well, to those that are here watching, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. You know, your view does count, and thank you for listening. And I know some of you guys have been here for a while. You know, whether it's been. Mr. Anthony, I've also been in some of CT stuff as well. I'll let you so, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so to those that have been here for a while, thank you for being here and thank you for listening. And stay tuned, you know, for all the things to come. Because if you're interested in what you're watching right now, you'll be interested in watching me too. Amen. She's a natural, man. She's just, yes. you know I mean, it's my baby, man. Like, you, you know, some of this stuff you can't teach, man. But shout out to my daughter, man. Shout out to my brother, CT, man. CT, man. Tell him whatever you want to tell him before we get up out of here, man. Are, are we leaving? I thought we were doing more shows. Oh, you want to do more? You want to kick her out of here and do more? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know. Okay. Oh, let me get out. Right. H-U-G.
And we're back. So yeah, man. Magic. Shout out to the kiddo, man. Yeah, man. You should I'm, be very proud of your daughter. I am. I love her. Great young lady. Smart. Beautiful. Great man, skin. She's, you know, she's amazing. It was Can't so, beat that when you're a teenager. Great skin, boy. It was it was so crazy the other day. There'd it be was, some kids out there with the pizza on their face. <laughs> Got, got the combination. Got the combo. shakies. <laughs> yeah, let me get that. Uh, <laughs> let me get the uh, Ralph. Let me, let me get that Ralphie look. Let me get that. Let me get the Ralph. <laughs> but nah, it was the other day. It was like Friday, and it was yeah. like Friday night, and um, she's playing a video. It's like two o'clock in the morning. She's mm-hmm. playing a video game. Um, you know what I'm saying? She got like she's online with like four of her friends. They're playing Fortnite, and I just told like I just looked at her. I was just like, man, I'm so proud of you. Like you're yeah. such a good kid. Like. She's 18. She ain't out here chasing niggas. She yeah. ain't out here trying to get drunk and high, like doing none of the dumb stuff that I was doing at her age. Like she's straight A's at a, at a, like sh- shout out University. to her straight A's. And we didn't even talk about that, but straight That's A's big. at her school, you know what I'm saying? And just good head on her shoulders, man. So shout out to my baby, man. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy uh, having her here, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad that she just, you know, just came and just chopped it up with us. She's an adult, man. That's weird. You know, it's weird too. That's uh, weird. Speaking, speaking of this. So this morning we was kind of getting into it because we was, uh, you know, getting ready. And I was like, Kiara, get up, get ready. Because for some reason I had put it in my mind I was supposed to be here at 1.30. Whew. Glad you fixed that. And then I didn't. But someone was telling me, like, no, I think you're supposed to be there at 1. So I had told her we would leave at 12.30. Yeah. And so she was just, so I came home and I didn't even know why. I was just like, hey, we need to leave at 12. She was like, you said 12.30. And I was like, well, I'm saying 12. Th- I said, I'm saying 12 now. She was like, but you said 1230. I was, so we go back and forth. And she was like, well, fine. I don't want to go. Mm. And so <laughs> I said, well, fine. Don't go. And I'd like just close the door. And I realized it was at that point that I really couldn't even get mad. Like she's grown. I can't make her do anything. I mean, I maybe could have said something about the delivery of it. Mm. But at the end of the day, she's grown. I, I I know she's no longer a child, but you know, luckily, like I went and I got ready, and then by the time I came out, she she opened up the door like on some let's go, like on some funny shit. So That's it was great. cool. But I I came to the realization like, man, my baby's no longer a baby. Whoa. I couldn't just go in there and say you're going because I'm telling you to. Whoa. Can Here's I? Here's the thing, man. Um, Can I? With all due respect, <laughs> I've always felt that there's a, a fine line of difference of being an adult and being grown. Notice that I said True. she's an adult. Mm-hmm. She's a legal adult. Legally, right. she does not have to get your permission to do things. True. However, grown is not relying on your parents whatsoever. And that is not where she is yet. Yeah, she that, will be there very soon. That tuition bill come to my name. You know, um, <laughs> when I, <Everybody>. my mother <laughs> cut me off when I was 22. And by cut off, I mean like I couldn't call and be like, hey, my rent is a problem. Can you uh, right. send some bread? My dad cut me off a year before that. And uh, so being grown is what every kid likes to say that they are right. to be able to do grown up things until something grown up happens to them that they don't know how to deal with. And True. then it's back to being, hey, help me. <laughs> Dad is baby. Yeah. So I hear what you're saying. She's not grown. Yeah, she's not grown, but she's an adult. But it just made me feel like I had never felt that moment mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. my parental journey yeah. where I was just like, hey. Yeah. Shut the hell up. Like, I was just like, I mean, what am I going to do? Pull that card? Dude, who are you talking to? I couldn't really say nothing. You so. weren't really grown until you came down here. What do you mean, her? Well, you no, mean, you. Me? I wasn't grown? No. As you came down here being? like, what, 30? I wasn't grown at 30? You came down here at 30? I did. Yeah, you weren't grown because you still had the support system of your family. <laughs> you don't know me here. <laughs> There's so much things I can say about the family dynamic these days, too. But, no, I was on my own since I was 18. Oh, yeah? Nigga, my parents broke up, and they were like, uh, what are you going to do? <laughs> really? <laughs> we're going this way. Really? <laughs> I was just like, man, I'm here. Bro, I, you don't know my story. We would We will break it. this down on other episodes on, like, how I used to live in ridiculous houses. and. Let's hear one now. <sighs> what you got on tap? Is the statute of limitations up? I oh my like the, god! I feel like the, the statute of limitations is up. I used to, I used to live in illegal houses. <laughs> First of all, I thought you were about to say something else, so I'm glad that it's that. But uh, go ahead. Well, we just how about this? We just used to stay in houses that we weren't supposed to be staying in. You were squatting. Just, not even that. It was. 
I don't know because I don't know what, what I can say. I don't want them looking up my stuff. Like we'll talk know. off air. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll talk uh, off air. But I come from a very uh, I ain't had no help, nigga. So I've been on my own since I was eighteen. Here's the crazy thing. For real, you were in these streets with those eyes. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no way. I would have been struggling with those eyes. Woo! Give me those eyes now. <laughs> what are we talking about? I'm out here. <laughs> But no, man, I've had no help. And that's why, you know, the crazy thing is, I don't know that I'd ever be able to fully cut my kid off. No, because you had the opposite. Yeah, so I don't know. And she's a girl and you're a father. Now, talk yeah. to her mama. I bet you her mama be like, I've been done with the little half <laughs> for five years. Don't tell me my titty sagging. And I say, oh, I got something for you. You'll be young your and bills, perky. Your now. bills is sagging. Your bills and is I ain't here to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't here to pick it up. This has been another fun, hilarious installment of Justice League. I have been your boy Doughboy. I don't care if he thinks it's redundant to it's say it. It's redundant. Like that. I'm your it's your boy Doughboy. Yeah, it's gonna stay like it's that. literally just is Doughboy. One last thing I wanted to say. Or it's your boy. One last thing I did want to say. Yeah, what's it? And we can do a deep dive into it because I what definitely want to hear your us? thoughts, right? I am strongly, and by strongly I mean it's most likely gonna happen considering dropping the moniker Doughboy and going by Anthony Dwight. Anthony Dwight. Anthony Dwight. You understand that? I think that the character that we've built as Ooh. Doughboy, Doughboy must be eliminated at all costs. And we will get more into wow. why I feel like that and the Die Doughboy Die episode that we will Comments have. about to go crazy. <laughs> we'll talk about that on the next episode. I've been your boy Doughboy. Doughboy.